Welcome to the First United Methodist Church of Muleshoe. We're so glad you're here. We're, as a matter of fact, we are so glad you're here that we really want you to prove you're here and write your name down on those little pieces of paper. They should be at the end of the pew if you'd fill that out. We'd thank you so much. Um, I think all of your announcements, no. Some of your announcements are in the bulletin, and you can read just as well as I can. Please take note of the new office hours, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4, Monday through Thursday, but the office will be closed on Friday. So if you need to talk to somebody at the church, you can't do it. Don't do it on Friday, right? Don't wait until the last minute like I do. Um, and then there's a couple more things there. And Victoria wants to talk about youth, and then Marshall has an announcement. So here we go, Victoria. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say a few things about summer camp and um, just give you an update on how youth is going. If you were here last weekend, you heard Sally say that she was a camp counselor once so apparently it just takes once <laughs> so I will be doing that this summer because I'm crazy enough to do it once so we are going to camp this summer the kids are super excited we have about 10 kids that want to go um, and you'll see that we are attending camp June the 21st through 25th um, the cost for each student is $320 <laughs> and um, on, a, I think, May the 30th, we'll be having a meal here that the youth are going to prepare for you all um, as kind of a fundraiser for them and also as a way for them to serve the church, which is such a great experience for them. So we're excited to go to summer camp. Hold on, baby. And um, if you would like to volunteer, we are finishing out the year. We have five long weeks left of school and we are all anxious to be uh, at summertime but we do have five weeks left of youth and we do need some volunteers to sign up to feed the kids um, they just love seeing your faces there um, and having somebody to actually thank is such a great way um, for them to to recognize that uh, what our church is doing for them and they're always very respectful and thankful of that so if you'd like to sign up for youth meal please do so you can talk to me call Call me um, and there's also a sign-up sheet on the back bulletin by uh, Miss Becky's office and thank you so much I should have done this last week but I had a severe eye allergy uh, I'd like to recognize the people who came to work day last Saturday afternoon uh, Prior to that, Tony Barrier had sprayed the weeds by the alley out here, and we want to thank him for that. But those coming Saturday afternoon were Robbie Bomer, Helen Cook, Drew and Betty Ennis, Chris and Gina Martis, Joe, I'm sorry, Tom and Karen Morgan, and Janice Morrison. Uh, these people did a tremendous amount of work, and we enjoyed the comradeship while we were working and we did a good job. Thank you very much. Good morning, church. Good morning. I went to camp once. I never got to go in, uh, like in high school and stuff, but uh, oh, I went as the pastor to be with my kids all week. You were a brave man. Once. once. It's one of the best things you can do for your kids growing up. It's also really a lot of fun. It's, and when, when you look back on it, you're like, oh, that was so much fun. It really was. Is that one way camp? Is that the one? I would, I would do everything I could do as a church to make sure that every child who wants to go gets to go and even has a little help if the parents need it because that price is... It only goes up. I don't know why. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and quiet our hearts.
we focus our hearts and minds upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. One God, three in one. We come to you, Lord. And we lay ourselves down before you. We kneel before your kingdom rule. We kneel our heart, humbly confessing our sins knowing that we are utterly lost without your relationship with us. But our relationship with you transforms us through and through. So take this moment and confess your sins. and pardon in the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven and all God's people said Lord Jesus and now that we enter this time of intercession uh, bring to our minds quicken our minds quicken our hearts Holy Spirit uh, to put those names and those events before us so that we can pray together if you'd like to lift up someone or something, something that's happening, lift them up. And if I can hear you and understand you, I'll lift them up out loud. Jesus, we pray for the church camp coming up, for all of the camps and all of those who are serving once and many times over. Lord, bless them and give them strength. Because come around Wednesday, it gets hard and you get tired. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to bring salvation to those many children. We pray, Holy Spirit, for those who will hear their call this summer into ministry or becoming a missionary, a pastor in this church, a youth director, a college youth director, college ministry. Lord Jesus, call the next generation. Jesus, name. we pray for our sick. And if there's anyone, lift up their name. Lift up their name. Lord, we pray for those around the country, around the world who are still struggling with, with COVID, who may be waiting for a vaccination. We pray for those third world countries who are still waiting. And we pray help comes to them quickly. Lord, we pray for our church in this unique time, in this pandemic, that they will be a light, that they will be a means of healing spiritually and physically and socially, that they will be the community to which all people come to find the truth of the gospel and the reality of the kingdom rule. We pray that you do that in us and through us here in Mule Street. We give the, the martyrs strength today in your name and pray on their behalf and their family. As we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you please stand and join us, we'll sing our call to worship, Beautiful One. <coughs>
morning, everybody. Oh, that was a good good morning. Everybody responded this time. Good. <laughs> okay, so this week, there's an important day that um, everyone's going to celebrate. Do you know what it is? No, not quite. We've got about five more weeks. Then we'll really be celebrating this week. No, Mother's Day's coming up, but it's not this week. That's already passed. Nope. It's Earth Day. Oh, man. Now you know. That's good. What does Earth Day mean, Jack? Okay, so it means we do good things for the Earth. Good. Well, one thing that I wanted to point out, what is really beautiful that we have here on Earth? Flowers. Very good. Did you get this from, was that your hint? <laughs> you have flowers at home? Yeah. Good. And trees. Good. And grass. Really good things. Cool. And weeds. <laughs> yeah, those are good. Okay, well, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is I've got these packets here of flower seeds, and what all do I need to make sure that this flower will grow? Water? Water soil. Soil. Seeds. The sun. I've got to have the seeds. And great care. I love it. Y'all are so responsible. Okay, so all of these things, who provides <coughs> these things for us? God does. He provides us with water. He provides us with sunlight. He provides us with the seeds to make them grow. Yes. And so with that being said, I wanted to tell you guys, just like God provides all the things to make these flowers grow, he also provides all the tools and resources you need to grow in your own faith right here in this church. Did you know that? Yeah. Now it's, we're connecting the dots, huh? So think about it. He left us with a Bible that is full of wisdom and truth. He has left us with, turn around, look at all these wonderful people in here. All these people of our church that are willing to help you whenever you need it, that are willing to guide you closer to God. And as you grow up, you're going to become one of them as well. It's all very exciting. Yes, and so you guys get to take these flowers home. I've got like 10 packets here. Y'all can pick and choose which ones you want. Those are my favorite. I like those. Okay, cool. Let's say a prayer really quick. Set those down in front of you so we're not super distracted, okay? Okay, I'm going to pray, and I want you to repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many opportunities to grow in your love and in your faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Celebrations or blessings this morning you want to share? This next weekend, I get to see my father in person. He's, you know, in a nursing home, and uh, those restrictions have been listed, lifted, and so I will actually get to touch and feel and hug my dad this weekend, so I am thankful for that. church family and as you know I run COVID samples to them for the hospital and thank God that is decreasing. I'm almost out of a job which is a hallelujah and I want to thank the special thanks to Janice Morrison and Karen Mason for running with me and keeping me honest and keeping me safe. God is good all the time. and all the time.
church. If you would, turn with me to Luke chapter 5. We're going to read <clears throat> verses 12 through 16. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. We are glad that you're here today. And we're we, uh, glad for those who are watching on TV and will watch on Facebook. Thank you. We're the church, whether we're here or out there, right? Amen? If Corona has taught us anything, is that we truly can be separated and still be the church. Right, church? Right. <clears throat> I'm a germaphobe. Are you? <clears throat> Anthony, we're, we're like brothers, I know. I, I hear you, right? My heart is as your heart. I'm a germaphobe. Now, going out in public can be very, very difficult. And I like to go out and eat at restaurants and go to the movies and uh, go to Walmart. Well, not really Walmart because you can't come out of there without germs, okay? You just got to kind of accept it and take your, take your chances. But I like to do all that stuff if I can follow the protocol. For example, I never touch a salt and pepper shaker. Do you? Think about it. Everybody touches that. I get a napkin or I will ask for a paper napkin and I will use that to salt and pepper whatever I'm eating. I will never touch one of those mustard and ketchup condiments. I don't even eat mustard. But I love, I mean, ketchup, but I love mustard, but I will get usually the same napkin and use that. Anybody else do that? I will never touch one of those dippers, like at Rosa's to get your pico de gallo or, or hot sauce or whatever. I will never touch that. I always get one, use it, because you don't know who was there. Did they wash their hands? You are just assuming, right? Anybody else like that? Oh, come on. No? I will never touch a doorknob in public. I will, I will first see if it's ajar, and I will reach up to the top corner and pull it out, because nobody thinks of that, right? Nobody reaches out if I can't use my boot. I've seen one or two people do that in public, and I didn't even teach them, right? It is weird, isn't it? She said I'm weird. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh, I will never eat from a bag of chips when I see this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Someone sticks their hand in the, in the bag and they're just like 10 seconds of looking for the perfect chip. Right? After 20 years, my uh, mother-in-law knows to pour them out. My father-in-law doesn't follow it. But my mother-in-law, oh, what about when someone, after they eat, sticks their finger in their mouth, you know, like a toothpick, and then they, you know, it will make me gag. You know why? Because they will, go, they will then go and touch something on the table. I know. I know it's difficult living in a world of contamination when you are a germaphobe. But I have taught my boys well, especially, and this is the most important protocol to follow. How do you properly exit a public bathroom? I know, oh, the elbow, you can, but you got to start before there. Well, you can use, I will use a paper towel. Get one if there's any left that's hanging out. Turn the knob. Wash my hands. Use that paper, no, paper towel to turn the water off. And now here is the key point, okay? So your hands are clean. If you touch anything, like the doorknob, or anything, guess what you have to do? You have to go back to step one, right? But let's say you've already washed your hands and you have made that perfect paper ball to toss it. Now, if you miss it and have to pick up, pick it up, what do you have to do? 
you go back to step one. But you get a paper towel to pick up that paper wad and you go to step one. You're thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But if you can get that far, here is the trick. You use that paper towel to open the doorknob and then you plant your right foot, reverse pivot, hands free. You try it next to him. Here's how you do it. Plant your right foot, reverse pivot, hands free, and hope you make it into the trash bag, trash bucket or whatever. Now, does that seem like extreme? Yes. Well, you're obviously not a germaphobe, right? And, and, and sometimes uh, it happens, but you know, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me if I break my protocol, if I touch a condiment. It doesn't really matter to me if someone else follows after me. Kind of a hypocrite, I know. Well, when we read about Luke, uh, his story about Jesus and the leper, we have to remember there were very, very strict protocols when society, the community, was interacting with a leper. Everybody knew the protocol because it came down from the Pharisees. It came from Leviticus and Deuteronomy. So think about a very dangerous world with no science or medical, very, like we know, right? And everybody follows this protocol, especially the leper. Here we go. Luke chapter 5, 12 through 16. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus has just called his disciples. And then this scene happens. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do we know anything about highly contagious diseases or sicknesses? We know about that, right? We know, have we not gone, we have all gone through this. We have experienced loss. We have social distance. We have worn masks and we have just stayed home. We have had our loved ones just like was it, we have had our loved ones separated. And it's, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. But we did it as a precaution. It was the right thing to do. So we know somewhat, somewhat what it's like to be in a community where they had strict regulations to put these types of people, the lepers, out of the community. And today I want to talk to you about that physical healing. But there is also a social community healing. And in the Gospel of Luke, healing is equal to uh, salvation. When you see someone, when Jesus physically heals someone, it is like Luke using code to talk about salvation, redemption of that person. Because in, in, in Luke and Acts, it, they're not separated, okay? It, it's not like spiritual salvation and then physical salvation. When, when he uses both, it is the total redemption, the salvation of the entire person. 
or looking toward that reality to come. There is a physical, there is a social, and in the midst of that, the very center of that is the salvation of our soul. The leper came to find Jesus. Now that's, that may be a very subtle little point because lepers would have to stay away from everybody. Uh, people would leave food out, okay? Maybe at a designated place, maybe outside uh, their home if that leper was in your family. But lepers stayed in a what outside town? But you, a leper colony, right? It was a highly contagious disease. Now, I don't have any medical knowledge. There are multiple types of leprosy, so I'm not getting into that. It's debated. But they had a place for them, and the people had, the clean people, had a place for them. And it, I, I just wonder if Luke is hinting subtly that the leper was breaking those protocols to come to town and find Jesus. Now, I think Jesus was just passing through because at the end, he, he is pictured going by himself to pray. He had already been healing people and calling the disciples and doing miracles. And it's often what Jesus does. He does the Jesus stuff, and then he goes to be by himself to get recharged, to, to commune with the Father. But along the way, this leper broke the protocols. He came into town. I think this implies that he knows of Jesus. But when he asked, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to make me clean. You see, I think he knew of Jesus. But I'm not sure he knew Jesus. If you have any doubt that Jesus will not respond in your favor, you may have experienced some type of loss or, or whatever it is that's keeping you from feeling that. Or you, you may not truly know who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for you. If you have any doubt that Jesus has the power to work in your life. You may not truly know him at a deeper level. And you know what? You just might be in the process of doing so. I don't think the leper truly knew what he was getting into. But he knew enough to know Jesus was coming to town. And that he could meet him. Let's talk about this real quickly. Let's talk about Jesus' response. Now here's a person, highly contagious, not, no longer exiled, basically, from the community. He falls down. By falling down, he's submitting himself. He's submitting himself to the will of Jesus. He's saying, whatever happens to me, it's going to be from you. It can, it can be in my favor or I can be ignored, but I'm taking the risk to lay down my face before you and beg, Lord, all he knew to do, the only thing he could do was bow himself, which is also symbolic of his heart, humble himself and beg the Lord Jesus Christ, request from the Lord Jesus Christ his need. And here is how the text goes. Jesus is not afraid to touch you and your sickness before he declares you are clean. See, the text literally is, and after touching him, Jesus said, I am willing. Like other times in the gospel, Jesus reached out and he crossed that barrier. The last thing this leper would have thought is that here is this super powerful magi, I mean magi, um, rabbi who's doing awesome things. The last thing that he would think would happen to him 
as this person would reach out and touch his head. Maybe touch his shoulder. I, we don't really know. She'd reach out and touch his hand. He was probably wrapped up. He was wearing a mask. They were masking up. It was a mask mandate. And the last thing he would have thought is Jesus would take that risk of making himself unclean according to the community regulations to clean this man who was exiled. If you do not think that Jesus will come to you where you are, you may not have reached that point where you have fully experienced the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus reached out and touched the leper, and then he declared, be clean. Jesus is willing, and he is able to accomplish God's will for your life, the will of the Father. He has a heart that desires to come into close contact with you, no matter what your circumstance. The leper says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you want to, Lord, if you desire. There's multiple ways of reading uh, that uh, the word we translate are willing. It's the word catharsis, okay? Right? It's, to, it's, it's that word. We, we have English words based on that. It's to cleanse. If you are willing, you see, the leper still wasn't sure that Jesus was willing. But what was Jesus' response? I am willing. I do want to. I do desire. And now, be clean. I don't know what you're going through today. But hear the heart of the Lord. If you are willing to let your heart trust Him, His heart is able to heal you. If you are willing to submit your life in utter discipleship to Him, He is willing and He is able to cleanse you, to empower you, to break those habits of sin. And God help me, all of us have one. All of us have one. I have one. I don't know if Anthony has one. Probably so. We all have some deep habit we need Jesus to break. And you know what? It might be something that um, we conquered a while back, but we know if we, if we give in, if we watch that, if we hear that, if we have that conversation, if we're around in that environment, it's just like the first time. It's contradiction. And there's always something. But if your heart is willing to trust Jesus to find out if he is willing, the heart of Jesus says, I am willing, be made clean. And then Jesus will cleanse you. And then he will send you to be a witness to others. The last thing this leper would have thought, probably, is that he would be healed. I mean, he, he, was, he was betting his life on it, right? He knew it was possible. But then, I, I, I just don't think he, he anticipated Jesus says, Now go, like all the other clean people, and surprise everybody at the temple. And do what they do and follow the protocols for all the ritual cleansing out of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. You see, when Jesus touches your life, when Jesus heals you, He makes you clean, but He also calls you. He calls you to be His witness. You cannot not be His witness and be His follower. You are His follower the moment He has cleansed you and He has given you new life by the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot not say something about it and be faithful to Jesus Christ. Your witness will start a fire in the community. Your witness will lead someone to say, I don't know what he has, but I want it.
where does he go to church? Where did he hear that? How did he experience that? Why would that community of faith take him back? Don't they know? Yada, yada, yada. Don't they remember? Yada, yada, yada. That's actually Sanskrit, by the way. Doesn't that person know what they have done? And they have the gall to go back? Now, it might be serious. It might be something deeply tragic and traumatic in your life. But if you're willing to let your heart commune with Jesus' heart, you will hear his desire. He will touch you. He will bring you back into community. And he will heal you. He will make you clean. As we stand today and we, uh, we worship, would you stand? I want to always, uh, you're always invited to come and pray. It's, 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 whether we say it or not, you're, this is your place of worship. This is where you commune with the Lord. You're always willing to come up and to pray. Excuse me, it, I, we're always, it is always open to come and to pray. But if there's someone here today who says, I want to know what you're talking about. I want to have the healing in my heart. I want to be reborn, or I want to dedicate, rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. I want to start again because it's Sunday and Monday's coming. God, help me. I want you to come today. You're not ostracized. Nobody laughs at you. Nobody thinks, oh my gosh, what's his problem? What's her problem? I can only guess. Come and be with God's people and be a witness to what Jesus has done. Let's sing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
love of Jesus Christ is extravagant and his friendship is intimate. That's what the leper felt. So go and take a chance on that love. Jesus loves you. God so loved you in the world that he gave himself on a cross. But that was Friday. And we have been through Sunday. Amen, church? Sunday. We are living Sunday life right now. Jesus Christ is resurrected. And that's our hope. May the favor of the Lord be upon you for a thousand generations. Upon you and your family and your children and their children. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Have a great week.